Close to the Hampshire-Dorset border in the village of Cranbourne is an archaeological centre that has been visited by thousands of people over its nearly 40-year history. The ancient technology centre is located behind Cranbourne Middle School, which is where its story began. In 1985, Jack Keane, a teacher at the local middle school, designed a project to build a replica Iron Age roundhouse with the help of children from the local school. They harvested materials from local woodland and reed bed to build the structure, which was based on archaeological evidence. The concept of people, especially children, engaging with the construction and development of the site has been the key ethos of the centre ever since. To this day, their focus is on finding enjoyable ways for young people to engage with the understanding of construction and buildings from the past. I've wanted my own roundhouse since I was a kid. This one replaced the original that was built in the 1980s by those school children under the supervision of Jake Keane. It plays host to living history displays and events throughout the year. I'm a really strong believer in having living history displays and events, costumed interpreters. It provides a sense of how a place like this might have been used and lived in. Without people demonstrating some of the crafts, cooking, just using the place, you don't get the same sights, sounds and smells from the past, so that only a few of the senses are being used. And it's always interesting to see how different spaces within a dwelling like this were used. There are often some surprises and patterns to see. In the early 1990s, the site became part of Dorset County Council Outdoor Education, so that that original school project could become a centre of archaeological education. With more than the adjacent middle school visiting the site, it was important to expand the centre's timeline presentation. With replica buildings from the Mesolithic to Middle Ages, thousands of years are being covered in one place. In 2002, my good friend Luke Winter took over from the site's creator, Jake Keane, and soon began devising plans to add to the site. Arguably, the standout structure of the centre is the Viking Longhouse. Inspired by a visit to Denmark, Luke designed a structure that would be able to take visits from residential school groups. The construction was started in 2007 and completed in 2010. As I'm sure you can appreciate, this is a magnificent structure. I have really fond memories of being here as a group of archaeology students from Southampton. We were involved in a lot of the construction projects. I did a bit of thatching here and some of my colleagues and friends did uh, a little bit of work elsewhere on the site. And in the evening, we all came back here and enjoyed some good conversation, some roast deer that we butchered just over there, and uh, an appropriate number of drinks whilst we were under the supervision of our uh, academic supervisors, of course. But the bit that I guess I won't forget from uh, one particular evening here is the lack of sleep that I got. We were sleeping along these raised benches that you can see either side of me, but uh, the building itself is really quite cosy with a, a nice long fire as there was behind me and all the windows and doors closed, but uh, it wasn't through lack of comfort. My friend Mike, who was sleeping a matter of metres away from me, um, tends to snore like a bear having its go at opera singing sometimes, so um, not a terribly peaceful night. As many of you might know, anything after the Bronze Age is a bit too modern in my opinion, but I can appreciate this. 
The carpentry involved in creating a structure that is both designed to be as authentic as possible while accommodating school and university groups in the modern day is even more impressive. Next to the longhouse is the Iron Age Earth House, called as such for its turf-covered roof. Based on a find discovered in the Isle of Man, the Earth House is used as the main event space for the centre. Its interior is built like a covered amphitheatre, so that it can host a variety of events from storytelling to music gigs. I suppose this is where we should perhaps consider whether spaces like this should be fully accurate. Although it's based on archaeological evidence, it's been made to serve a purpose of accommodating large groups of people with an unobscured view of the central space. Now, although roundhouses in prehistory, certainly large ones, probably served a similar purpose on particular nights, it's not quite the same. But I suppose we should also consider the value of spaces and places like this. When you're in here and there's some music or a storyteller, it gives you a strong feeling of prehistory in a prehistoric space. And I suppose that's where the value of places like the Ancient Technology Centre reside, and they do that really, really well. Now, really, it's impossible for them in the modern day to have structures such as this that are fully accurate. They certainly didn't have the same safety measures and other restrictions that we have now as they did in the past. The ATC does a fantastic job of balancing experimental with experiential archaeology. They've hosted experiments that are featured on TV, as well as archaeological conferences, and yet still manage to offer courses and experiences to the general public. Not an easy balancing act. As well as a Saxon Grubenhaus, or grub hut, there's a Roman workshop and garden. The workshop is split into two, with a blacksmith's forge at one end and a potter's shop at the other. The garden is filled with some of the plants used in Roman kitchens. A particular favourite with younger children, and older children like myself, is the Roman water lifting machine. Created after an original was discovered in London that actually featured on a Time Team special, the replica was later gifted to the ATC, Ancient Technology Centre, and has since, with the help of visitors, moved a whopping 340 tonnes of water. With continued use by visitors learning how to move water the Roman way, the centre can learn more about how specific parts wear out and the users and feed that information back about structures from the past and the people that use them back into the archaeology community. Whew. For a place that started as a school project, it certainly developed into a very special site of archaeological learning and experiences. I actually did one of my first living history events many years ago, just over there next to the Earth House. The day was a complete washout despite the high visitor numbers. It was very satisfying to be here more recently, filmed as part of a BBC documentary about Stonehenge, of course, with Luke Winter and the rest of the Ancient Technology team. We built this wooden sledge to carry this rather large stone and in true Ancient Technology Centre style, it was dragged up this slope by children from the Cranbourne Middle School. <laughs> 